Oh, it's loud. Oh, it's loud. Yep, that's, that's loud. Okay. Oh, my fucking god! Hi. Hello, everybody. It's... <laughs> this is a dating simulator. Uh, this, this... I'm disturbed by this only because I'm trying to smash Colonel Sanders right now. So, let's, um, dive right into this shit show. Enter your name. What's my name? Uh, Norva? Confirm. Give me your fucking chicken, bro, because that shit's delicious. What? I don't have any standards. <clears throat> right, uh, let me... Oh shit, I didn't read that. The world is peaceful and serene. You can stay in the moment forever. Oh, Jesus Christ. Or you could wake up now, now, now. Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. Uh, throw the clock out the window and stay in bed forever. Fuck everybody. Oh, you slept through the school year and gave up on the once in a lifetime opportunity to meet Colonel Sanders. End of game! <laughs> I win! <laughs> I fucking. I already win! <clears throat> uh. Okay, well. I fucking. I already lost! <laughs> Oh, <laughs> game is done. There you go, chat. <laughs> Hope this was the best. Like, <laughs> fuck. Let's try that again. Okay. Yikes! You're in such a hurry, in fact, that you forgot to put on any deodorant. Yuck! Before running out the door, you're sweating buckets as you rush to arrive on time. Uh oh. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. Oh, she's so kawaii. She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it. Good morning, Nova. Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Uh, actually, I'm... Because I sure am excited, a little nervous. Okay, a lot nervous. What's the... It's just that this morning, I made breakfast for myself, but, well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Right. <laughs> but with the University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning's famous three-day-only semesters, I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. A sweet girl, Miriam has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer, she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. <laughs> I gotta go. This is my life. I need to leave. Oh my god. <laughs> I've been waiting for so long to meet a handsome fellow I could call my own. And I'm sure you will soon. In no time, we'll be graduating, and you'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking in no time at all. As you talk, Miriam up. <laughs> Sorry, I read that as feel Miriam up, and I got really excited. Um, but... Uh, I, anyway, uh, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. <laughs> you know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bangs. Can you believe I cut them myself? Oh, that's why they look like a fucking mess. I mean, it's great. They look beautiful. You can definitely believe it. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> I cannot believe it. Hey! That is the weirdest way to spell Ashley I've ever seen. <clears throat> she is smoking hot, though. She is banging. I'm trying to fuck. I mean, <clears throat> sorry. It's Ashley, your arch rival. She's totally evil, but you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants and she knows it. Fucking yes, yeah, she can. Hello, Ashley. Look at those titties! She has fucking, she has the, she has chicken leg stockings on. There's, there's chicken leg stockings and they're so tight on her thick ass, thick ass thighs. Can you all see that bulge right there? Can you fucking see that? Look at that. Look at that little bulge. They're so tight. Oh, I'm not saying that I want her to bend over for me. It's just that I do. Anyway, this game is not going to go well for me. <laughs> <clears throat> Hello, Ashley. 
Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. You leave Nova's shins alone. They're perfectly normal shins. <laughs> Fucking what? <laughs> Ugh, you can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley, but she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone. She's so fucking extra that she had to add extra letters to her name. Look at how thick those thighs are! That's not even a skirt, baby girl! That is a fu- You're naked! But I'm okay with it. Please turn around. Anyway, <clears throat> across the quad you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van, the man-man. I don't know if I can play this game. <laughs> it's fucking stupid. Van Van the Man Man has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight that you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. Are you sure this is KFC approved? <laughs> no lie, they're rocking glutes. <clears throat> Van Van? What the fuck? Oh! My god, every new character just makes me need to leave. <laughs> Why well, he's adorable. <laughs> As you approach the door, you see a goofy looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. He farted. His name is Pop. Uh, oopsie. I, I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. <laughs> Uh, that should do the trick. I love you. <laughs> think, think you mean thank you? My name is Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. Hi, Pop. I'm Nova. So, are you gonna make me hold this door all day? Nope. And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead Aww. of you. Is it just me or is he kind of cute? I think it's just you. Oh fuck, that scared me. A scruffy looking pooch. Why the fuck is there a dog teaching this? A scruffy looking pooch takes his place at the podium at the front of the class. Adorable. His name is Sprinkles. Ruff! No, no, quiet down, everyone. You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of UCSAL. Please call me Professor Dog. Woof! I may be cute and little and fluffy, but I still demand respect. Woof! Fucking, he's so cute. Out of nowhere, <laughs> the what the fuck is this school? Wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. I'm chilly. Someone close the window. And then, he okay, he walks in. Oh man, I got goosebumps. <laughs> I don't know what to do, I'm fl fucking- Hello? <clears throat> Please, call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders. Sweat begins to beat across your brow and your Vegeta. You feel like everyone is looking at you and you're not entirely wrong. Oh. Colonel Sanders, beautiful angel that he is, stands before you, smiling gently. <laughs> His hand outstretched. I'm sorry. I'm fucking, like, beautiful angel that he is. Boy, howdy. This classroom gets hotter than the Kentucky Friar. Please, use my handkerchief. <laughs> I'm in love with- I'm in love with a video game character. I can't breathe. What the fuck? Wait, Colonel Sanders is talking to you about how sweaty you look? You're completely mortified, fuck. This can't be your first interaction. What if he never forgets this moment? You stretch out your hand and Colonel Sanders places a fine silk handkerchief in it. Yeah, he does. Got cum on it, like it's his cum handkerchief. It has his natural- Oh my fucking god, I sound creepy as fuck. It has his natural scent on it. It smells of the most delicious chicken you've ever smelled. His natural scent is chicken? <laughs> Does he sweat chicken? <laughs> Hi guys. So, sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer. 
I, I really miss. Quiet! Uh, don't, don't, don't you recognize me? This is my third year in the school with you as my teacher. Everyone stares at him blankly. <laughs> does, does no one remember me? I'm. You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish! Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels! <laughs> Where? What the fuck? The class bursts into laughter. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey, Nova! There's still a seat here! Seems that no one has claimed this seat next to me, if you're interested. Fuck! Two good options, but which will you choose? It's giving me anxiety. I'm either gonna lose a best friend or I'm gonna smash the Sanders. Fuck. I'm gonna lose my best friend if I don't sit by her. Like, we've been best friends forever. Yeah, she's, she's you know? You this she's stuck up for me, you know? And we might smash, so I might get smashed regard. Oh my god, it's Comrag. <laughs> best friend. It's fine. I have his cum rag, I can sniff it later. Apparently he smells like chicken. I'm so glad to have you near me to support me through this class. Of course, you're my best friend and you fucking cock blocked me. Who else would I sit by? Colonel Sanders? He has such a magnetic personality and there's a seat open right next to him. If you had sat there, you might have gotten to know him a little better. <laughs> Bitch! I'd never sacrifice our friendship. Besides, I'm sure I'll get the chance to talk to him later in this semester. I've got three whole days. That's like a lifetime. Why the fuck is each semester three days, bro? As soon as you've settled into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast! It's time for a pop quiz! Yay! A quiz about me! This is an incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you are ready for life at culinary school. Keep your knives sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question number one! If a train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cook? Hello? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> oh, fuck. Extremely looking at you, Pop. That's right. Forest is to tree as chicken is to feather, night vision goggles, and a slam dunk. This is the dumbest fucking book quiz I've ever seen in my life. That's right! What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? A comically oversized fork, a meat tenderizer, a spork. <laughs> I want to pick the comically oversized fork, but like... <laughs> but like I'm scared that it'll end the game and I won't get to smash old mate Colonel Sanders here. A spork. That's right! What food is best for a broken heart? Anything, as long as it is prepared with love and not too much salt. Camel meat? A pancake that looks like a silly face? That's right. Is Sprinkles a good boy? No. He's a talking dog that teaches at culinary school. He's the best boy! That's right. Your total score is a perfect 5 out of 5. Wow, be honest, did you cheat? <laughs> You look up to see that Colonel Sanders has been watching you tally your score. He's impressed. Be impressed by me, Daddy! Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, man, he's talking to me again. <laughs> look. I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you have a beautiful brain. Okay. Mount me, Daddy. <laughs> oh, fuck. Hot diggity, Nova. You just scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance. I'm fucking getting goosebumps every time he talks to me. What the fuck is this game? <laughs> time for lunch. Wow, the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. Do you smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. I love how this guy is never going to get a name. His name is just student. Everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? N no, I, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, hey I, I was... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. But, but I... Shh! Lunch, lunch, lunch! She said shh. 
In honor of the new semester, I've prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. Uh -huh. That must be the smell I smelled. Indeed, that smell. You hold your breath, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented, but were the rumors true? Is this. The aroma envelops you, and you begin to feel warm and safe from chicken. Chicken made me feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken? What a novel concept. Your stomach begins to grumble as if to say stop thinking and start eating. I'm gonna stop thinking because it hurts my brain. For years, I have been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I'll say about that. What, you think we want your stupid secret recipe, dude? <laughs> nah, my dude. Nah. You wait to see what Zinger Ashley has prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was just, like, writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent. As she slides closer to Colonel Sanders, she realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants him all to herself. Mm. Oh, please. Hmm. Will Van Van the Man Man, if you don't want any. I'll take his! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold on. I mean, like, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Easy now. There's enough for everyone. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of this bucket and sink your teeth into it. It's amazing. What the fuck? Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. <laughs> Alone with your taste buds, gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Focus your mind and meditate on this moment. Try and identify every flavor. Savor the moment and everything that it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart. Or swim toward the light! I don't want to identify the flavors. I'm trying to be in love with Colonel Sanders. So we're going to learn about his heart. The flavors in your mouth are beautiful, pure, heavenly. What a guy. Alone with the flavors, you feel something that can only be described as love. For a man? For a flavor? Are they the same? After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. You approach Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he's doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wondered if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? <gasps> <laughs> How bold to come out and ask. It's an idea I have for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. <laughs> it's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester is only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. He's clearly not going to give it up easily, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel? Shouldn't learning be fun? Aww. You got moxie, I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone and then leans in. Oh, fuck. Oh, goosies. Um, you can feel his warm breath as he whispered. Bro, moist, sploosh, get at me, <laughs> fuck. Oh, Colonel. Colonel Sanders. I think it's fine. <clears throat> anyway. Just one ingredient. But you can't tell. I use blank. It's something my great-grandmother taught me. Blank? Wow. You'd never have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you searched. While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared 
While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. He uses gum. <laughs> you find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Neg him to show your own strength. Wow him with a big idea to add an additional ingredient to really spice things up. Be modest but thoughtful. <laughs> modest but thoughtful. Oh my god, he loves me. Did you see the hearts he farted? Did you see the fucking fart hearts? <sighs> well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your- Look at those fucking arms. Hello. Hold me. Daddy. Now you've got his attention. The flavors were complex but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery, it was perfect. I appreciate the compliment, Nova. I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. We should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. He fucking wants me? He farted hearts for me? We're basically in love. You step into the massive cooking arena, where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Look at this place. It's magnificent. Finally, we get to show our stuff. Wait a second. Oh no, we have to show our stuff. What if I totally blow it? You're not gonna blow anything. <laughs> I'm gonna blow some. Sorry, what? Except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature. Adorable tiny food creations. Welcome students to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Pussy so wet, I gotta have him as my partner. Mm, 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 mm. Sorry. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is? Me and you, if that wasn't clear. Wanna be my partner? Aww. Sure, Nova. I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hello, my new partner. Beep boop. Bzz. Hmm. Oh my. Two potential partners? I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. Adam it is. Sorry, Clank, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Pop today. <laughs> Pop gives a... How do robots cry? Pop gives a big smile as he steps up to the same station as Miriam. I'm a chef. Fuck. <laughs> I've made a mistake. Fuck, I've made, I've made a very big mistake. He holds up a banana and without peeling it, proudly eats the entire thing. Oh, I've made a mistake. Oh, it's disconcerting, but Miriam is too kind to act grossed out. All right, you two. For today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which disc do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Steak tartare seems easy enough. It's fancy and you don't need to cook it. Using octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. Your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. Mashed potatoes! I don't even like mashed potatoes. But he just farted hearts for me, so... Like... We're in love. You know, I forced down some mashed potatoes for that dick. What? I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes? <gasps> and gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking the perfect produce is a passion of mine. Please pick me as produce! Will be your the peach to your eggplant daddy hello please pick me looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here does someone have a crush on colonel sanders we're just cooking partners mind your own business sanders heart is my business and you'd better keep your fingers off my man mm. someone call for me fuck no jeez van van while I'm over here crushing Nova's dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there, Ashley. Van Van. 
Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Uh. Actually, no. It looked like Nova was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was gonna say, Colonel Sanders. Maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. I <laughs> doubt it. <gasps> Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complementary shadows? We fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel if you don't watch out. Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Turn to Colonel Sanders, hunk of hunks, in your time of need. I mean, he's been farting hearts for me forever. And I did just ditch Miriam. Turning to the dick. I'm here to learn and express myself via my cuisine, not bicker with prima donnas. Partners were chosen at the beginning of class, so let's all respect the format, okay? You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. I chose Colonel Sanders, and Colonel Sanders chose me, isn't that right? A businessman respects all fair agreements. From contracts to handshakes, I took on Nova as my partner for this activity, and I stand by it. Based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're perfect for each other. Neither of you has Nova's natural talent or their loyalty. Being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of potential. You look for Sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis and their short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize that in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat out of which he pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Hey, hi, potatoes. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. This is lit Rodica. <laughs> Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. Fuck, he's winking. He's winking? Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face! <laughs> Van Van, do something! Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold right there, Nova. We do not waste food in broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Could I have potato face? Van Van rushes back over a covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty. Braised tentacle of octopus in my silky saltwater sauce. Plate, plated on a battle axe. Blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. <laughs> Who the fuck played? You know what? Never mind. Fun. You, you, you've ignored me for too long. Th that ends now. It is I who will have the first bite. And you will all look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No! Don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late, it has been eaten. I, uh, think I left something in the oven. I, 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 I don't fe feel so good. <coughs> it 
killed him. He's a ghost. He's literally wearing a sheet. Everyone step back. Don't take another bite. <sighs> when you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped in Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain for just a moment, then is almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Oopsie. He's like poison. The entire class is gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite, ob despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. Not sure the professors here make enough money. Um, hello? I just turned into a ghost over here? Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on! You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today? Before you go on, I want you to know they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him that you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Nova. There's something I need to tell you. <laughs> Hold it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Not oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef in the world has ever seen. And every day since, I've been working towards that dream. Day and night, never stopping, never resting. Also, lifting a lot of weights. Like, so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all our hearts. That our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Ugh. Hey, no, I... You... Shut up! I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that! Hmm. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance you hear a long, sad sigh. Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. Holy fuck! Why is there a spork monster? What the fuck is this game? I can't... This game is a gift from the gods. Okay. <clears throat> the spork monster is here to fight a hero! Yeah, I think I left the fridge door open later, nerds! How dare you threaten me just as I was letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid. Be very afraid of me! Because I'm a monster! See? Is he rhyming on purpose or is it that just a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn based fight sequence! What the fuck is this game? <laughs> what will you do? <laughs> Spork monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. Defend! You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Trepidation! You continue to stay back and endure whatever comes your way. Seems like a pretty weird strategy, but okay, sure. You do you. <laughs> Spork Monster focuses their mashed mind and draws an energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? Attack. I just love you. I love you! Spork Monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble, they go on the attack once again. Oh god. Spork Monster uses Utilitensil! You take two damage from the attack. If you take much more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. Attack! Attack! Oozing. Spork Monster is oozing cheese sauce onto the lawn of the quad. I wonder who's going to have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable, Spork Monster prepares for its ultimate attack! Rounded edge! Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Where do you get that cane from and can he spank me with- I mean, hello! Colonel Sanders summons the energy of 1,000 chickens. <laughs> oh my god. Pot Pie Power Pinch. Pot Pie Power Pinch does 10 damage. Spork Monster is defeated. You saved me. 
An injured spork monster spews steam into the night. Forget mercy. Finish him! No student will ever walk the quad in fear again. This monster messed with the wrong chef. Attack. You'll never survive my student debt loan destruction. It does 10 damage. Spork monster is completely vaporized. Colonel Sanders looks on in awe. You continue to surprise me, Nova. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover to find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it out is Borco. Hmm. Borco. That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. <laughs> 